Just hold on a second, though. All right, so we got an album coming up, but I am very curious about this. Ah! April Fool's, bitch! I was planning on doing this shit all along! I gotta see this, you guys. What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And so apparently I gotta review some TikTok song from 10 years ago that recently got popular. And you know, I'm kinda getting sick and tired of this shit. Like, no, there's nothing wrong with stuff getting popular on social media, but every time it's so clear that no one's actually listening to these as full songs. They're just lame 30 second gimmick novelty records that are barely worth their salt beyond the meme. And most of the time, they're not even that fucking funny. Like, what? Well, what's the gimmick for this one? <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe this. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a little trouble too. Okay, wh wh where did this guy come from? Who is this guy? I mean, uh, the yell, the hokey stock sound effect turned into a beat, and why does that one synth line sound so goddamn weird and spiky? It's like an evil killer whale singing its own villain music. For real, who is this goofball, and why does he look so familiar? <laughs> hey, what, did anyone else just hear that music cue? <laughs> Oh no, what's happening with the footage? No, please, not a YouTube skit interrupting the fucking review. God damn it, I hate this fucking theater kid bullshit. <laughs> no, not YouTube theater kid bullshit. No, don't answer. Well, what is this phone don't call? Answer. Some alternate version of me and I'm getting back to the future? <laughs> Excuse me. That's right, asshole. You're officially getting better than what's what we call getting back to the future in the future. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is your future self, and uh, yes, I sound like a knockoff blend of two voices that you like doing, but, uh, but never mind that. See, because uh, I ripped a hole in fabric in space and time, rap critic, uh, to make this multiverse phone that can access different versions of you uh, for nebulous reasons that I'll reveal later. Uh, but till then, this is a phone that can access the younger version of you that made this song in an alternate. Okay, that's nice. Well, well, let's get back to the review. I'm not here for this low concept YouTube lore shit. Ooh, because it's an alternate universe version of me, I'm supposed to react differently to it or something. I don't give a shit. But for real, to be honest, I'm down to give the song a chance. And I can tell there's some indie production going on with this joint, so I don't want to be too harsh. But man, it just so much needs to be worked on from a music perspective. Like, okay, fine, just give it some praise. Maybe it's a little catchy. The sample you could say is used kind of clever. But whatever, nigga, what I'm focused on is how try hard he's being with these bars. Once again, this crap keeps happening. Feeling like I took four shots to the abdomen. Like, it's one of those things where you can tell they're going out of their way to open over lyricalize things by phrasing it in a way people don't normally do so it comes out kind of awkward like no one really says crap in that context unless they're trying to make music their mom could also listen to but you can tell he also did it to just have that little mini internal rhyme with that first syllable of happening you know what i mean and feeling like i took four shots to the abdomen like why four you can tell he's like throwing more words in there to fill out the flow you know what i mean so here I am again, screaming like a whiny brat Cause I had the nerve to think someone could like me back But okay, here we get to the meat of what the song's about, unrequited love Specifically the type where this guy's been pining after different girls for years Without anyone ever liking them back With each new endeavor, I think this is where the change starts And this time will be an exception to my track record And I get all that, but man, the awkward wording just keeps taking me out of it but maybe I should have hired a fact checker to tell me, hey, 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 need I remind you, you thought the same thing every other time too. And when I go through this, the pain within me rages to the point where all I can say is, when I go through this, the pain within me rages. Like, oh, yeah, could you have worded that a little more melodramatically? I don't think people got the emotional angle you were going for just yet. Yeah, my main problem is just the wordiness of it. You can tell certain rhymes are there just for the sake of forcing a multisyllabic flow instead of trying to make it sound organic. And when love rolls over me like a vicious tank, I feel just like the victim of a malicious prank. Like, is the tank really vicious? Is that a word people use to describe tanks? Like, no, he put that in there to rhyme it with malicious in the next line. And again, I get being frustrated with not finding love, but wow, does it veer into some strange territory. It's the same old music. See, what you did was confuse a nice guy for a eunuch. Oh, okay. I, I think I might actually need to call this guy. Why do you give the best of yourself to the worst of us? Is a guy being a complete joker plus? All right, let, let, me, let me give him a ring real quick. Because once we're spouting the women only like assholes talking point, we're usually on a pretty distinct pathway here. Oh, hey, is this the guy who sent me that future phone thing? Uh, well, yes and no, but we don't have time for that. Point being, I wanted to pull your ear about that new Oh My God joint you just made. Oh, cool. Uh, wait, does it get, like, really popular in the future or something? Uh, 
something like that. <laughs> but for my show in particular, I wanted to start off by asking, well, first of all, what the fuck is up with this production, man? It sounds like carnival music written by a coke addict. Yeah, I, I know it's kind of weird. Kinda? But, you know, <laughs> I, I was purposely trying to go for that, you know, melodramatic, over-the-top sound. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I have to admit, the mix is a bit muddy, and while I certainly was working with some ideas I thought I could capture the sound that I was going for, I was ultimately more focused on the lyrics than the musicality, and, you know, maybe that caused a certain elements of it to you not know, really come through the way I wanted. I took it to a producer. Oh, good. Okay. Well, a uh, film student audio guy, anyway. Wait, you, <laughs> you took your weird sounding experimental rap song to a film student to mix? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not his expertise. I threw him a curveball of a mixing job there because, you know, the instruments that I use are kind of low and my voice is typically kind of low despite the pubescent wine I'm currently putting on. You know, to have a contrast to your voice in this video, but clearly as a reference to a popular sci-fi character, but, you know, hopefully a little less grating so I can maintain it for a whole episode, but also so people will want to keep listening. Yeah, yeah, you got to be meta by commenting on the thing. But back to my point, uh, the track's got other strong, low instruments crashing against my low vocals, you know, uh, coming to him with an unbalanced jumbled mix, it just gave the guy a conundrum to untangle, and I don't know, I think the guy did the best job he could. <laughs> He's got an excuse for everything, don't he, folks? Hey, <laughs> well, uh, moving on, I wanted to ask specifically, uh, what inspired you to write this song? Whoa, did someone just ask a music student about their art project? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> okay, so check this out, right? So the album it's from is called Rapper's Liebe, right? Which means rapper's love in German, because I based it off of something called Dichterliebe, which means a poet's love uh, by this romantic age composer named Schubert. See, what was cool to me was that Dish to Leave was what they called back then a song cycle, which essentially just meant a collection of poems set to music around a particular story or idea. It's basically today what we call a concept album. It's something where every track relates back to a connected theme. And well, Dish to Leave was from the romantic era, so uh, of course it's about this melodramatic guy who falls in love with a woman who's already engaged to be married, so he frustrates himself into a rage, and by the end he metaphorically throws his love for her into a deep nearby river, but like, it may have also been, you know, literally throwing himself into a river. The point is, it's some sad boy hour shit. And I got inspired to modernize it after diving into the poetry and really comprehending how it wasn't just pretty words, but trying to relate a human story of experiencing unrequited love and how the heartache... Yeah, alright, let's cut the history lesson. <laughs> let's talk about the nice guy shit in the verses. What's up with that? Talk about that. See, what you did was confuse a nice guy for a eunuch. Oh yeah, definitely. I worded it that way for a reason. I wanted the character in the song using specific phrases to cue you into that kind of person. But despite the over-the-topness, I also wanted to try to give a genuine account of that. See, I was saying this early on that, like, it was clear from, like, he already commented on this years ago. That it's not supposed to be his own, like, personal experience, but it is supposed to be a character. But I think it is what creates such an amazing disconnect and why this song is genuinely so fun to listen to. Um... That emotional experience for how guys fall down those rabbit holes. Okay, but you definitely sound a little convincing, if you know what I mean. Okay, look, I'll be honest, man. I'm not even 21 yet, you know. I'm definitely awkward about talking to girls about how I feel about them, because, well, I mean, can, can we just break the fourth wall here and just say, isn't it hard in general to tell someone how you feel about them? Like, as much as we want to dump on guys who become misogynistic, they don't just start that way, right? Don't they start just like everyone else, where we're all young and inexperienced on how to talk to the person you're attracted to? So, you know, you just try to talk to people that you like and be yourself, but when it never leads to a relationship with anyone you're interested in, well, don't you start to of course feel like you're not attractive i mean you know because you don't have any evidence to believe the opposite right so so you feel insecure about it and you kind of hope there was something you could do or say to get the person that you like interested in you when you don't know if they'll like you back so uh, with this album i wanted to have it set up that he specifically isn't the type of guy who reads game books or, or acts fake Tell to attract the type of person that he thinks somebody wants it but it just hasn't happened for him yet Okay, yes. but when we get to that third verse, it gets a little, you know. And you should know that it's difficult to change a man whose attraction to you is only physical and it's pitiful. To give something special to someone worthless. Why do I meet so many girls who make this the purpose? I mean, that's a pretty charged language saying that so many girls like guys that are bad for them, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. But, you know, I brought it to that point so I could do the realization flip he has near the end. When will you see that this path will always lead to rejection? But, but I, I guess, guess I could ask myself the same question. question. I mean, we're both on a similar mission. Chasing after something that will never come to fruition. But this flip doesn't work because it's such a sour, like, 
The difference is she had someone nice to fall back on and I didn't. <laughs> okay, but you still wrote it like a college kid trying to flesh out their word count for an essay. That may be so. I mean, I currently am a college kid, but uh, the point I wanted to get to was, you know, when guys like this get rejected, uh, they do often notice that the girls they like will sometimes end up with guys who sometimes aren't great for them. And that's what prompts these types of guys to feel like, well, well but I'm so much better if she could just see. So uh, I put it in my narrative. I think, hold on. I got to show you guys something. We're going to interrupt this video right because i feel like this uh i saw this video for some reason this exists and i also managed to find it uh today better than he can someone made this for some reason you were but with the girlfriend you just met and I could treat you better than he can. I know I could treat you better, better than he can. Sometimes I can treat you better than he can. Better than he can. I know I can treat you better than he can. And every fucking song has to have this theme in it. And Ed Sheeran, he's a nice guy, you know, you should give him a try, and you should leave your man for him, cause I know he could treat you Wait, did my DoorDash ever show up? Calms you guys. DoorDash just confirmed your order 30 minutes ago. I know I could treat you better. I know I wish I could show you this map. Uh, let me put it like this. This is my house, right? My apartment. This is... Let's, no, no, no. Let's do it like this. This is my house, right? This is where the food is. And this is where the driver is all the way over here. They're not even on the same planet. Picking up your order, they are li Bro, fuck you. They are literally like 30 minutes away from the store in the opposite direction. Good God, dude. Why Why do I even bother with DoorDash, dude? Like, actually. Anyways. Oh, I could treat you better than he can. And any guy like you, you deserves a Lucas Graham. Lucas Graham! I know I could treat you better than he can. And any guy like you Channel 10. I know I could treat you better. But yeah, someone actually made this. Oh. The character almost make that parallel connection, you know? She wants this guy to be with her on a certain level, and that guy's not right for her because he's not really interested in the relationship that she wants. But pretty much in the exact same way that the main character likes this girl, but he also can't be right for her because she's not really interested in the relationship that he wants. Uh, but instead of actually internalizing that lesson, he still falls into the, but at least I was a nice guy thing though, right? Oh, hell yeah. Can't have the asshole actually learn his lesson, right? That's no fun. But his was different. She had someone nice to fall back on and I didn't. And that's how it always ends. Because I'm just a really good friend. Oh my God. Well, couldn't someone see that as ultimately validating his perspective by ending on the woe is me pity party thing? Yeah. I, oh yeah, no, I, maybe that's a good point. Maybe the song works a little better in context of the rest of the album, uh, where when you get to the I, why is it that like this is like the first rap critic video in a while that I've actually been able to sit through front to back Like he's killing it with this shit, dude And you know the character metaphorically throws himself into the river or maybe he literally does because art And it ends with the final chorus that scolds him for doing what he did You never knew if it was because of you Well now To, oh my god, please, please. Now you don't have to have to make it stop. <laughs> so the story ultimately ends with the narrative.
narrative coming down on the character for cutting people off like that. Because, you know, look, man, I may not know what does make people like you, but when you let the rejection from people you weren't meant to be with anyway affect you so much it makes you a callous person, well, uh, that would only become like a self-fulfilling prophecy that makes you into the person that people shouldn't want to be with down the line anyways, right? Well, I don't buy it, but whatever, it's your music. Hey, look, I only had so much time to craft a butt so cohesive narrative with songs. Yeah, we'll plan your scheduling better next time. Uh, anyways, do that. overall, hey, I give this like a three out of five. The production. What? Uh, hold on a second. Context support. I got a context support about this DoorDash order. Here we go. Hi, Brad. I'm your DoorDash virtual assistant. Thank you for being one of our most loyal customers. Thank you for being one of our most loyal customers. A bit rough around the edges, has an unpolished spikiness to it that I could see being appealing to some people and how it's trying to emulate that explosion of complicated feelings when you're young and trying to get through a crush that doesn't feel the same way about you, but the mix just ultimately feels cluttered. And lyrically, I'll give it a few points for earnestness, but it's still some pretentious art school rap shit, and I think the overriding of parts contributes to the muddling of the message. Because like three that out part, of five. The, the, we're both on a... Okay, to be fair though, he, he actually, three out of five, here, let me show you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's lower than what I gave it, you know, to be fair. You know, if we're, if we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, definitely lower than what I gave it. So, you know. Similar mission, like, just say we're both doing the same thing, you know, stuff like that. And it's not even that you can't use big words, but, but they have to sound natural in the flow of how someone would actually talk so it doesn't sound forced for its own sake. And while it tries to tackle that bitterness that can come up from repeated rejection, I think the execution could have used more focus in its intention. It starts with trying to explore those feelings without diving into misogyny, but I feel like what the clarity of the message can easily get lost like, in translation with how it ultimately comes out. If I'm being honest, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's potential here, and I think it's a genuinely cool idea for a song, but but it's buried underneath layers of muddled production and unclear messaging. That said, I, I do like it when art isn't necessarily perfect people always doing the right thing. I like it when it sometimes gets messy in order to explore those negative facets of the human experience. And I think it's even better when it's done with a bit of self-awareness that prompts folks to examine the biases that lead people down the roads that the character you're following in a piece of art is taken. But it's a hard tightrope to walk and not every time does everything stick to the landing, but yeah, in my opinion, I think he did about as well as he could have done with the tools, time, and knowledge he had by about 21. And hey, even if it doesn't always come out perfect- Alright, does he- Oh, oh, there's a whole skit yeah, When you really okay, want to get your heart out there, sometimes you just got to roll with the punches. Everything. Even if those punches are self-inflicted. Helium. I'm contacting yeah. support. Hey, a uh, younger version of you again? Just, just a quick question. Since you're like future me and I, uh, you know, still don't have the answer about what to do about liking girls and talking to them, could, could you maybe give me some practical advice? <sighs> Okay, okay. Here's the high school level Sesame Street lesson for the YouTube video essay wrap up. Look, the truth of the matter is, there's no perfect formula to get someone to like you, just like there's no perfect formula that would make you like someone if you're not already attracted to them. Now, because of the perspective of how you're experiencing all your crushes, it makes it seem like girls don't like you, but the truth is, it's not a general idea of girls that you want to date, it's someone who specifically gets you as a person. And when you find them, it'll be worth getting through all the people who weren't actually good for you, just attractive to you. And the way you get to that person or those people is to invest in the things you enjoy doing in your life, find where those things take you and along the way present yourself as friendly and as cool as possible in appearance like dressing well sure but equally in how you talk to folks and not pushing anything beyond the genuine connections you have with people and as time goes on i guarantee you the people who dig what you have to offer will come out of the woodwork and all along you'll have been keeping company with a friendly cool mofo who's driven by his passions and is only keeping company with people who are as invested in him as he is in them wow that actually feels kind of helpful uh, or you could just get really rich you know just amass a whole bunch of wealth then people will definitely say they love you oh well, that sounds kind of hard and not worth it if I'm trying to find actual love. Well, try the first thing then, all right? Uh, good talk. Anyways, I'm the rap critic. And oh my god. What the hell yeah. is it now? Contact me. What up, asshole? It's old you from the guy. future, but also the past of this video. But n n never mind that, because now I'm going to reveal the reason why you had to do this. Oh, wh what? Think about it, man. You just reviewed yourself, and you weren't nice about it either. It kind of hurt my feelings, but, you know, you were tough but fair. But, you know, I was calling because, well, that guy doesn't always sound like that. 
Hell, give him some time and he ends up sounding a little like this. Lighting on the speed like a wave dash. Just to show you how some dope shit can make cash. And make the people put their hands up like roller coaster rides with flows that are cold that are Nova Scotia's tides. The way I glide over a track like all I'm... Alright, alright, cool, we got it. And of course, the years it took for his... But anger, everyone's a danger. Real con... Other people's... Alright, then. Good point. Yeah, I don't know, man. Fucking, I'm in the house like carpet, you know? I'm in the house like carpet. Um, shout out Rap Critic. Uh, surprised I'm still subscribed to him. It's the first video of his I've watched in like months. But, you know, bro trying to be clipping. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. All right, album time, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon Sheets says, here's a great example of country music before it was bastardized by right-wing crackpots. It's an album made by a trio of music legend legends with some beautiful vocals. Album time, album time. Ooh, Sam. Thank you, and I think somebody else became a member and I didn't say anything. Woo-ha, woo-ha, ha hoo ha All right. Uh, I am still dealing with DoorDash, though. Because, again, I don't know what's going on. I was asking, can it be reassigned? Because it looks like somebody is, like, on crack delivering my food. I tried calling them, but not a sec. Let me unassign them. Sweet. Get this. They're driving in the opposite direction from me. They are not even picking up their phone. They're, they're, I don't know what's going on with them, but at least, thank God, I was able to be like, just get someone else on it, you know? I, I'm getting sushi. I don't care if it's room temperature, you know what I mean? But, like, for the love of God, just... I want my food in the next three hours, you know? <laughs> I want to sign the dash and a new one will be a sign. Sweet. Perfect. Appreciate this. You know what kind of sushi? Bro, spider roll. Spicy tuna roll. You know, the classics. All right, cool. All right, let me get out of here. I'm losing my mind, though. There's no reason the map should be zoomed out as much as the map was. Like, I've never even seen the DoorDash map zoomed out that much. I literally was, like, able to see more of the state than I would. <laughs> like, it's not okay, you know? <laughs> they were so far away. I don't understand. Uh, is this the only... No, there's a lot of requests before your Space Ashes. That's why we gotta get into it. Javino says, what's up? Do you think breakcore break, uh, beat stuff like Pink Panthers will be big in the near future like the next trend? I can, Look, I have absolutely no way of predicting that. Um, I couldn't tell you, but I could just tell you that uh, there is definitely a demand for this style of stuff, and I definitely hear a lot of people diving into it more. Um, if it picks up, it's still gonna be luck, but I also wouldn't be like completely surprised either.